Today I have the pleasure of introducing a graduate student, Yan Feng He. Yan Feng did his bachelor in Beijing at the Agricultural University of China, and he later decided to join the Conabo Laboratory for his PhD studies at the Stowers Institute for Medical Research. Now, as some of you may know, I also did my PhD work with the Conaways, so I had the pleasure of working alongside Yan Feng for a couple of years and directly observing how his project evolved over time. So I can really attest to the work that he's about to present. So without further ado, please take it from here, Yan Feng. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here. My name is Yan Feng, and uh, today I'm going to share you a story about how we discovered that a PORT2, one of the PORT2 RNA polymerase 2 elongation factors, elonging, contributes to activator dependent transcriptional activation by using biochemical approaches. When we talk about activator dependent transcription, we usually focus on activators, motifs, and downstream signals. For many years of work from many labs, including our lab as well, that there's a group of co-activators may actually play an important role in transcriptional activation step. Among this is the mediator complex. So one prevailing model about mediator's role has been proposed by using Galfo VP16 system, in which case VP16 can bind to GALF4 sites and recruit mediator to the promoter proximal region and uh, stabilize the TF2D binding to the core promoter. So activator, mediator, and the TF2D could form a stable initial intermediate, function as a landing pad for the other general transcription factors and the RNA polymerase too, and let the transcription machinery to start making transcripts. However, uh, we all know that gal 4 v 16 is a synthetic activator, and we would like to test this stable initial intermediate hypothesis in an authentic model. So in the next few slides, I'm gonna introduce you guys the authentic promoter model we're using to address this question and how we investigate this model in test tubes with biochemical approaches. Okay. The promoter we are using here is HSPA5 promoter, which is a ER stress responsive gene promoter. It contains three copies of ER stress responsive enhanced logic elements, ERSE. It is a great model for us to study transcription activation for several reasons. First, it has been studied quite a while. People already identified a group of transcription factors that could interact with those motifs. And second, the three copies of ERSEs are adjacent to the Tata box and the core promoter and TSS, makes it easier for us to develop the biochemical approaches because we can work with shorter DNA fragments for sure. Let me briefly introduce this ERSE to you guys. So a canonic ERC is a 19 base pair of uh, uh, base pair motif, usually start with a CCAAT, a CAT box, could be bound by NFY, which is a heterotrimer transcription factors. And uh, then there's a nine base pair of high GC region could be bound by TF2I and SP family proteins. Last but not the least, the CCACG motif could be shared by YY1 and the master regulator in this case, ATF6 alpha. ATF6 is an ER membrane protein and uh, it can only be present in the nucleus upon ER stress and uh, protein cleavage. And also ATF6 binding to the ERC requires NFY. So today I'm gonna ask you guys to focus on two key players here, ATF6 and NFY. Based on our previous experiments being done by our lab members and myself, we have few observations here. First, ATF6 alpha activation domain recruits mediator to HSPA5 promoter. And uh, second, when we're using purified mammalian PO2 
initiation factors and the mediator, they don't support ATF6 NFY dependent transcription. However, we also have the, uh, have the experiments show that nuclear extract can support ATF6 NFY dependent transcription. So that provides a hint that for us that there could be uh, some activity in the nuclear extract for this initial intermediate formation. So before I show you any results, I want to touch base on the in vitro transcription assay system I've been using for testing this stable initial intermediate hypothesis. First, you can generate your promoter of interest and a uh, reporter just set. So in this case, it's a two nighting base pair of sequenced lack of guanine residue on the non coding strands. So the message RNA would be uh, the, the RNA product would be GLUS. It would make our uh, it would make our life way easier to check the specific transcription product from certain promoter. And then we can using button label primers to make this promoter template and immobilize it with strap everything beads, incubate the template with certain activators and uh, certain protein fractions. So if we have stable initial intermediate formed on the template, then after incubation and several high cell wash, we should expect to see this stable initial intermediate to be salt resistant and uh, remain intact on the template. So after wash, when we add back some uh, add back all the general transcription factors and polymerase two with P32 labeled NTPs in the test tube to perform in vitro transcription, we would see uh, two nitine nucleotides of RNA product on the page gel. And if you see a stronger reaction in the presence of activators, that means there is an activator dependent formation of stable functional initial in intermediate on the template. And here we are focusing on the gel 4 containing E4T template and the uh, endogenous HSPA5 template for our assays. The very first experiments we did is to test whether this stable initial intermediate holds true on the gel 4 E4T template, also to test the assay if it's working. So we can see that when we incubate gel 4 VP16 with purified mediator and TF2D together with the immobilized template, we have a strong activator dependent transcription on E4T by using VP16. Surprisingly, when we apply the same condition here with uh, on HSPA5 template by using ATF6 and NFY, we did not see any formation of stable initial intermediate. But as I mentioned before, we do have evidence that HeLa cell nuclear extract can support this activator dependent transcription. So we decided to perform an old school protein fractionation for the HeLa cell nuclear extract. For audience who does not familiar with this type of experiments, let me explain it to you. So we know that different proteins have different ion strengths on the protein surface. So we can lo load all the proteins on this type of uh, column, phosphocellulose column, and then with 0.1 molar KCL. And then the protein could not bind to the column, in this case, are going to be flow through. And then we call it P.1. After that, by using increased concentration of salt, to elude the protein out from the column, we got different population of proteins out of the column. We call them P.3, 0.6, and P1. Then after fractionation, we test different combinations of these fractions by using the same setting. And we found out that only P1 is sufficient and necessary to support the formation of ATF6 NFY dependent stable initial uh, in, uh, intermediate formation. Then 
we did some freezer mining. We've been able to show that red liver P1 production has similar property as HeLa P1, because we have lots of red liver P1 in the freezer compared to HeLa P1. So I performed gel filtration by using red liver P1. And then I assay across the column, do some mixing experiments to make the long story short. At the end of the day, we found out there's a two uh, important distinct property uh, fractions they are needed for this formation of stable initial intermediate. One of them is high molecular weight activity, which contains mediator and TF2D, while the other one we call it low molecular weight activity, which contains something else. And uh, I could mix these two activities together to recover the formation of stable initial intermediate. And now I'm going to show you the data. So in this slide, what I did is mixing experiments. When I incubate high molecular weight fraction or low molecular weight fraction separately or together with immobilized DNA template, plus or minus activators, and then apply them to the high soil wash. Within individual fractions, we cannot see we get a stable initial intermediate. We can only get this stable initial intermediate recovered by using these two fractions together. As I mentioned earlier, that high molecular weight fraction contains TF2D and the mediator. Here's the data for it. So we did Western blot to show that TF2D and the mediator in the high molecular weight fractions and the TF2D activity with the red dots here shows that the activity peak resembles their protein locations as well. Also, we've been able to replace this high molecular weight activity with purified TF2D and the mediator. When we have the, this purified TF2D and the mediator incubated with low molecular weight fraction together here, we can successfully get the stable initial intermediate formed on the HSPA5 template. So this leads us to ask the fundamental question here. What is it in the low molecular weight activity fraction? So remarkably, one equal to elongation factor, elonging shares chromatography properties with this low molecular weight fraction. And by mass spec, elongin is a relatively abundant protein in the low molecular weight fractions. So we went ahead to test this. Before going any further, I would like to introduce the elongin to everybody in the room. The elongin complex is a heterotrimer composed of one large subunit, elongin A, and two smaller subunits, elongin B and C. Elongin was first identified as a, one of the CO2 elongation factor, and elongin A directly interacts with transcribing CO2 and stimulates the overall rate of RNA chain synthesis. While BC could form a subcomplex that binds to elongin A and stimulates A's transcriptional activity. Later on, it has been found that elongin could be interact with CO5 and RBX2 to form, to assemble a RNA polymerase 2 eukinetin ligase to get involved in CO2 turnover. So for a long time, people are focusing on its role in CO2 elongation and turnover properties, but not about the activator dependent transcription activation step because we did not detect any RBX and CO5 in this low molecular weight fraction by mass spec. So the experiments I'm going to show you today, I only use the elongin ABC form, the elongation factor form. Okay, back to our story. By doing Western blot for elongin subunits in the, across the columns, we found out that they present they, uh, the elongin fractions, cofractionates with low molecular weight fractions as well. 
So encouraged by this data, we went ahead to test the possibility that elonging might be the key component in the low molecular weight activity fraction. I made a recombinant elonging in bacteria to test whether it would could reconstitute the activator dependent transcription with other factors or not. The wild type elonging A contains a N terminal domain similar to TF2S, another CO2 elongation factor. And the C terminal of elonging A contains elongation activity and the BC binding properties. After you express the protein and incubate the wild type elonging with purified TF2D mediator together, we can see that after wash, you can get an activator dependent stable initial intermediate form. And while if you take elonging out, no reaction. So this may argue that elonging might be the key component that recover the low molecular weight activity. On the other hand, as an important property, we want to make sure that what we are looking at is the right promoter dependent PO2 transcription. So we did single dropout assay for every general transcription factors and the polymerase two in this system. As expected, when we take uh, this system we are developing in the lab, it truly depends on general transcription factor B, E, F, H, and PO2. If we take them out, we do not have this stable initial transcription happening. So we, are, we do have a good PO2 dependent activator dependent transcription here. So back to elonging. So we want to know what elonging is doing during this activator dependent transcription. Does this activity relies only on the region that corresponding to the elongation property or other region is also necessary to have? We took advantage of elonging mutants information generated in the lab and made some mutants to test whether full length elonging A is necessary or some mutants could re uh, replace it. We made N terminal division which lacks of S2-like domain, which won't interfere the elonging function in elongation, while the C-terminal deletion would impair its ability to stimulate elongation. And also, we generate some BC-only protein, which just doesn't contain any elonging aid at all. So by after generate those what type elonging and uh, mutants of elonging proteins. I tested them side by side. We can see that at first, when we have in the wild type elonging A containing elonging, it can support formation of this stable initial intermediate. Surprisingly, on the other side, none of the N terminal or C terminal deletion of elonging A containing elonging could recover the reaction. BC alone protein does not do it either. So it argues two important points here. First, this activity is from elonging recombinant protein, not some contaminants from bacteria prep. Okay. Second, this elonging A activity requires both N terminal and C terminal domains. It argues that elonging contributes to activator-dependent transcription more than just in elongation step. It might also involve in activator, uh, activation step. Besides that, I have another evidence to support this hypothesis. When I try to dissect mechanisms for this intermediate assembly, I did order of addition experiments. I found out that when I leave the elonging or purified mediator out from the first step, we lose the stable initial intermediate. However, if we try to add the missing factors back in the second step, they could not rescue the reaction, which suggests that elonging and the mediator 
they are necessary for for the formation of stable initial intermediate in the first step instead of second. Meanwhile, I went back to check the whether this elonging is needed for the other activator dependent system or not. But we have WP16, P53, and uh, ATF6 NFY for comparison. It seems like with WP16 and P53, with or without elonging, is not gonna change a lot for the formation of stable intermediate. However, elonging is definitely required for ATF6 NFY to form a stable intermediate on HSPA5 promoter. And I have preliminary data to suggest that this might be the case, not only in, vitro, uh, in the in vitro assays, but also in vivo in the cell. When I treated the cell with either uh, non-target SIRNA or elonging A SIRNA, after 48 hours, followed by ER strip treatment, then I co collected the RNA samples, made cDNA, qPCR to check the HSPA5 expression level, which normalized with GAPDH. What I found here is that HSPA5 response to Thaps Gargan has been impaired by elonging A SIRNA knockdown treatment. And also, in the interest of time, I won't be able to show you the RNA-seq data and the cut and tag the data set for those factors we generated in the lab. So our working model here is that with ERC containing promoters, including HSPA5 and many other ER stress responsive promoters, they may have the transcription factors, recurrent mediator and PO2 elongation factors elonging to the promoter proximal region to assemble a stable initial intermediate. And then they could function as a landing pad for the other general transcription factors and RNA polymerase too to form a complete pre-initiation complex. With elonging pre-assembled to the promoter region makes it possible to help the cell to respond to stress more rapidly from poised state or you can call it inactive state to active state, both in transcriptional activation step and in elongation step. And with that, I would like to thank my mentor, John Rong Wei, and uh, all the Conway Lab members and the uh, Stowers Institute uh, for providing us a great place to do research and all the all my committee members and uh, co-facilities at Stowers. And also, I would like to thank you guys for your attentions and uh, I would end my talk here and uh, happy to take any questions. Excellent, thank you very much, Yanfeng. Let's start with some of the questions in the Q&A. Apurba is asking Yanfeng, he says, is the elonging mediator driven transcription sensitive to TF2H inhibitors, like THZ1, for example? Uh, that's a great question. We haven't tested that in the test tube per se. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, we, we don't know the answer to that. Okay. But it's some potentially interesting question we could Ask in the lab. Right, yeah. All right, uh, so Mike Carey, he's saying, Jafeng, terrific biochemistry. Do you detect a longing in the pre initiation complexes formed on immobilized templates using nuclear extracts, either by mass spectrometry or Western blotting? Is it a stable component or does it do something and then leave the pre initiation complex? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Doctor, for asking the question. I know this kind of uh, yeah assays you've been doing a lot, and uh, I think so. The short answer is no. We didn't do too much with nuclear extract since we have lined up the purified system, reconstituted system in the lab. So, but. Uh, 
so far, I think elonging by by using this reconstitute system, we do see elonging present mm -hmm. in the yeah I um it's in the so I don't know the answer, but I by doing function because we check the transcripts in the end, they do stimulate the transcription. So it, there is a high possibility they could be present in there, but I, I didn't test it. So the answer is, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And thank